Wilkins and Elson LeMet on the mound today at Great American Ballpark in Cincinnati trying to win his fourth straight game. The Padres in the last three have won all three games that he started. So is he. He's nasty the last couple of times out and trying to keep it going against the Cincinnati Reds. He'll have the hill today. Will Myers back in the lineup may have turned the corner on what's been a long slump for him. He had his 22nd home run of the year last night showing signs of coming out of that slump against the Reds. On the other side Joey Votto riding a 14 game hitting streak 477 along the way with four homers and 13 runs batted in. He'll be back at first base today for the Reds. Welcome inside the broadcast booth everybody. Don Orsillo along with Mark Grant. Welcome to Padres baseball. Well Denelson Lament on the mound today mentioned that today he's looking for his fourth straight win. He has changed his arsenal a little bit over the last couple starts. Slider heavy I guess is a way to look at it for Denelson Lament. Andy Green Darren Ballsy talked about about three or four starts ago. They want him to break out the slider early and often last time out 49 percent sliders more than fastballs because usually it's like 60 40 or maybe a little higher on the fastballs but it's been had good results against the Pittsburgh Pirates. In fact his last three when you look at it 18 and third innings pitched only 11 hits and Don a strikeout per innings pitch. Here's the thing about the Nelson Lament that I see when the sliders on a nasty oh yeah early in the count. It makes it tougher for hitters when they see that slider tougher to catch up to the fastball and you know what else he doesn't have to throw the nasty slider to get away with it in Pittsburgh and threw a handful up and out of the zone they still swung at it. Well the Padres trying to gain a split of this four game series against the Reds we play day baseball from Cincinnati and will Myers get the group back we'll find out after a home run last night they'll try to keep it going today he's back in the lineup at first base we're back with the first pitch from Cincinnati right after this. Where the pets go. And by Honda, hurry into the Honda Summerbration Sales Event today. The Ohio River on a beautiful day in Cincinnati, the Queen City, where the Padres and Reds wrap up their four game series. Time now for the weather report brought to you by your always sunny San Diego Honda dealers. 82 degrees with a west breeze at three miles per hour. Forecast is for fair skies Don Orsillo Mark Grant and Bob Scanlon with you from Cincinnati for the finale Padres trying to gain a split of the four game series. Now fans hope you'll join forces with us for Saquon pick the stick way in on Twitter for a chance to win a free force of a golf courtesy of Saquon Golf Resort just hashtag I'm with the last name of the broadcast you want to join forces with if they win you could win two one random winner selected daily follow us at Fox Sports SD for more details. Donnie looks like you're running away with it. Well I'll tell you what Mark Sweeney had a big night last night and Andy Green hoping the Padres will have a big day today before they take off for Los Angeles. Yeah how about everybody contribute everybody accumulate points and split the series against these red legs two and two. Luis Castillo ready with the first pitch of the afternoon and it's in there for strike one to Aswahe. Well, Aswahe leading off today. With Manuel Margot getting the day off, an unusual day off for Margot. 291, two homers, 12 runs batted in for his Wah and he'll ground it down to first base to Joey Votto. Castillo covers for the first out of the game. Let's check out the Padres starting lineup brought to you by Toyota. You just saw Swahe leading it off and at second base with Corey Spangenberg at third, Jose Perella in left field with Jan Herbis Solarte at short. Well, Myers at first, Hunter Renfro in right, Matt Caesar getting the start in center field with Luis Torrens doing the catching, and to Nelson Lamette pitching and batting out of the ninth spot. So one away, and Corey Spangenberg standing in. So day game after night game how do you respond. Uh, well gotten used to it over the years I guess yeah. you know you kind of it's normal to me. Boy I tell you what it creeps up on you fast as a player especially at 1235 start. A lot of people might not realize but you know that half hour 40 minutes rather than like a 110 or a 120. I think day games in general are tough on major league guys with so many night games in their routines that all of a sudden are gone thrown off completely with the day game. And also. There are days where you can expect, and I'm sure the manager gives you 24 hours or fewer than 24 hours because after the game last, hey, you got the day off tonight or yesterday or tomorrow. Gosh, it's even tougher for me. I can't even put a sentence together. <laughs> <laughs> for well, the, like, well, an example. It's tougher now. I'm, I'm sure Manuel Margot knew last night that exactly. he was not playing today. Had the uh, day off today, at least to begin the game. I'm sure he is available to come off the bench in this one. Spangenberg with a swing and a miss strikes out first K of the day for Luis Castillo two down. 
Well, defensively behind Castillo today, left to right in the outfield for the Reds. It is Adam Duvall in left field. Patrick Kiblahan, who was in right last night, moving to center field. Jesse Winker starting his third game of the four game series in right. Eugenio Suarez at third. Zach Cozart at second. Scooter Jeanette. Joey Votto at first and Tucker Barnhart doing the catching for Luis Castillo. Two down in the first inning. And Jose Perella standing in, batting third as he has been lately, and why not? He's been on fire for the Padres at the plate. Seven for 14 in this series against Cincinnati. I would have to say that Jose is seeing the ball extremely well. Popped up foul off to the right out of play. Let's learn more about Luis Castillo, today's red starter. This kid's got a live arm, folks. Four seamer, pretty straight. Changeup is one of his nastiest pitches, inconsistent with the slider. He threw a nasty changeup to get Spangenberg. And uh, it's about 88, but this kid works quickly. He's lean, good arm speed. And there you see the arsenal. That He's impresses me right there, the differential between the fastball and the changeup. 10 miles an hour. You want, yeah. yeah, I think 10 to 13 is ideal. Especially when you're throwing that hard. And we'll have to keep an eye on the arm speed, too, because some pitchers will give it away. They'll slow up their arm speed a little bit. Haven't seen enough of Castillo to really see if he maintains that arm speed on the changeup. Just briefly a Padre for yep. a little while. And then headed back to the Marlins. The deal that was rescinded last year and then ends up with the Reds as down to first base with a two out walk goes Jose Perella. Let's take a look at the keys to the game brought to you by your San Diego Honda dealers. Rattle Reds early. I mean, get on the board early. Put them on the defensive. We know the home run's been a big key. This kid coming to the plate has a home run in the series and slide into the seventh for Lamette. Plain and simple. Denelson. Give you seven, maybe seven plus. It's a day game. It's hot. Let's see if he can be economical early with his pitches and take him deep into the game. Short lead at first for Perella, held on by Votto. And as Jan Hermes Solarte will take ball one outside. 271 coming in, 12 homers, 44 runs batted in. And today getting another start at shortstop. He's been at second base, third base primarily, but. Since coming off the DL and his Wahe playing so well at second, he's seen some time at shortstop. Sharing it with Dusty Coleman. We've seen some good glove work and footwork around the second base bag from that combination. And Harris has had a good series at the plate, six for 13. A home run, a double, and three RBIs. On the ground foul. That was the combio. That's change. Combio change. Wasn't sure if you were. Uh, oh no, I'm, I know what a combio is. It's a lot of stuff you say I don't understand, but uh, yeah. I know what that is. I like that Castillo works quickly. Change up grip. You peek inside his glove. Left field and Adam Duvall moving over to make the catch. It ends the top of the first inning. Padres don't score. The Reds are coming up. Fastball, the slider, and the changeup get to two strikes quickly because he can put some hitters away. This guy he is a strikeout pitcher. And what do you know? So now it's time to wipe him out. Does he do with the fastball or the slider? That slider is quite like a mule, I'll tell you that. Said Elson Lamette ready for his 13th start as the Padres do not score in the top of the first inning. Cincinnati Reds coming up here in the bottom of the first inning. Check out the Reds lineup brought to you by Hyundai. Jesse Winker back in the starting lineup and in right field. Zach Cozart at shortstop with Joey Votto at first base. Adam Duvall in left. Scooter Jeanette at second base with Eugenio Suarez at third base. Patrick Kiblahan at center field and Tucker Barnhart doing the catching with Luis Castillo the pitcher. Batting out of the ninth spot for the Reds. Ryan Price, the manager of this Reds team. And there is Jesse Winker standing in on the left side. 
Whitaker getting his third start in four games of this series and back in right field. 239 hitter, two homers, six runs batted in for Winker. He'll send one out to right field. Renfro going back almost to the track to make the catch out there. For the first out here, the bottom of the first inning. Scout report on Denelson Lament. Slider early and often. We talked about him in our game open and got swing and missed stuff. And you know what, Don? We could, and, and I'm hoping for both guys. Um, obviously, the Padres want to beat the Reds today, no question about it. But we could possibly be seeing a 25 year old and a 24 year old that have bright futures, both for the Cincinnati Reds and the San Diego Padres, in Castillo and Lament. Two good pitchers on the mound today. Yeah, Zach Kozar will pop it up into shallow right field and going out there, not making the catches as well. Hey. And Renfro got fooled on that. He was frozen in right field on a ball net, not hit very deeply into right. And he got a late break to come in. That's why he had the only chance and could make the catch. That is a shame because Lament made a good pitch. You'd have two quick outs. And as you mentioned, it's that one little pause when a hitter gets fooled. The swing may have fooled the outfielder, and they're going to rule that an error. That's a tough error. I would have to say so as well. All the way out there with your back to the plate trying to make the catch over the shoulder. After looking at wow. it. Absolutely. See if that holds up. Now Cozart at first base with one down and Joey Votto the batter. Three fifteen, thirty 30 homers. 82 runs batted in his. 30th home run of the season coming in this series against the Padres. Swats at it, fouls it off to the left out of play. I told you about his hitting streak off the top. It's been very impressive for him. 14 game hitting streak, 21 hits during that time, and hitting at 477 during the 14 gamer. One of the toughest outs in baseball. Puts together a great at bat. We talked about him choking up. Great bat control. Knows the strike zone. Hits to all fields. Padres a double play depth. Good pitch. One and two. That's the pitch Andy Green's talking about using it early in the count. Even in the count, behind in the count, for a strike. Towards left field, Perella headed back towards the wall, and he makes the catch and holds on to the baseball. Well, get it back in. He will flip it to Caesar, who sends it back in, and back to the bag at first goes Votto. Nice catch out there by Perella. He banged into the wall, able to hold on to the baseball after he made the catch. Fastball away. Votto's got power that way. He's hit a home run in this series already. Hey, nice backup also by Matt Caesar. And Cozart retreating back to first base. I was like, get the ball in. He's coming around second, had to re tag and yeah. get back to first. Thought for sure that was going to be at least off the wall. And I think that uh, Perella did see that. Cozart was halfway or maybe a little more. That's why he paused a little bit. There's Adam Duvall. He's been shifting on him on the left side of the infield. They do the same thing here today. 267, 25 home runs, 77 runs batted in. Popped up, foul ground, Myers way. And Will staggers but makes the catch and ends the inning. Done with one from Cincinnati without a score today.
definitely don't want to get my hopes up to say, oh, I hit a home run, so, so now I'm going to get going because that's happened a few times throughout this last two and a half months. So, you know, you don't want to build yourself up to, to, to be cut down. So I just I felt good today. I just want to build off that and, and not really think too much just to say, you know, now I got it going. I just want to continue to build on that and, and, and move forward instead of just saying, oh, well, I figured it out now. Um, but I like what I did today. I liked uh, that I stayed through the ball. I like that I made contact four times. So, uh, you know, just go from there. Will Myers talking about the process that he's been going through to try to get himself back on track, guys. Now, he has been very transparent throughout in terms of talking about different things he's tried in the batting cage. A few days later, something that he's seen on video that he's tried to make the changes with. It can seem overwhelming, but the good news from this whole thing is that he is learning a lot about his swing. He's learning a lot about his approach. It's not a question if you're going to go into slumps. It's a question of when and how you get out of them. Will Myers is learning how to do that, guys. I uh, just had a flare to center field. It was just out of the reach of Kiblahan. I made a diving bit out there. Myers with a base hit here to begin things in the second inning. So maybe that'll help him yeah. carry over, even if the home run did not last night. Myers at first for Hunter Renfro. You know, we talk about guys slumping and how many times in baseball were we here? Well, maybe that little flare will get him out of his slump. Well, it looked like a very catchable ball. That ball like went right, right under the glove. Rare start at center for Kiblahan today. Billy Hamilton out there every day. It's a real plus not yeah. to have Hamilton out there today. Yep. After the great many catches he's made in this series, especially robbing Carlos Wahe in game one a few times. Hamilton off and to keep his speed off the base paths. Also helps things out. His 45th. Stolen base in this series to lead the majors in that category. I see him at some point today. 235, 20 homers, 45 runs batted in for Renfro. That's out of the sixth spot for San Diego. Theo has slowed it up with a man on base. One of eight rookie starting pitchers this year. 13 rookie pitchers overall for the Reds. Tough to win that way. Swing and a miss for Renfro. Went after that 95 mile an hour fastball. In fact, chew on this little nugget. Over the last three seasons, and I'm reading from the Reds notes here, it's not like I recited this or memorized it. Over the last three seasons, rookie pitchers have started 213 of the Reds' 438 games. That's 49% rookies. Swing and a miss, 97, a little extra there. As a second strikeout for Luis Castillo, one down here in the second inning. Oh, he's not afraid to go right after him. Up and in at 97. But that's exactly where Tucker Barnhart was set up. One out, one on, and Matt Caesar. Caesar getting the start at center field. Manuel Margot as the beginning of the game off. 223, three homers, 13 runs batted in. That's a double play depth with Myers at first and one away here in the Padres' second inning. Almost got him. Gets a run on that fastball. I think sometimes for Castillo, he opens up that front side, leans toward the first base line and doesn't get the release point out there and it's only a little bit but only if it's a little bit still that fastball will leak on the arm side up and in. Side three and zero. 
walked Jose Perella in the first inning. Has two strikeouts at this point, 25 pitches deep into his outing, and inning in a third for the live armed right hander. There's a strike three and one. You know I think so much tells you about the way a kid handles himself on the mound. I'm just looking at Castillo here just even in between pitches the way he gets set up the way he looks in the way he poses on the mound his his attitude on I, I think that this guy's got it. Grounded softly down the third baseline foul and he's battled back from a three and oh situation to now three and two. Close captioning for today's game brought to you by Wiener Schnitzel. And Don, when I say it, I think you know what I'm talking about. There, yeah. There's that intangible, right? It's like Nelson Lamet, same thing. He's got that attitude about him on the mound. You either he's, have it or you don't. Yeah, he's sure of himself. He knows what he wants to do. I can see that in Castillo. Over and Myers diving to the outfield side of the bag at first to elude that tag by Joey Votto. Nelson Lamette on 10 pitches disposed of the Cincinnati Reds in the first inning. You're looking at a good one right there in Lamette. On the ground down the third baseline foul. Fought off a good fastball at 98. And he's not afraid to throw that inside, to bury it inside. And you see the 4 1 1 on Luis Castillo. High on the walks. Opponent's batting average, though, 218. I would say uncomfortable at bats against Castillo. Ball four and he loses Matt Caesar down to first base second walk allowed by Castillo and the Padres have two on with one away here in the second inning. I think that's Castillo's third best pitch of the three goes fastball change up we've talked about and then that slider very inconsistent with that slider. It's like he has trouble throwing it for strikes. Yep. So off the back side of the mound briefly in the midst of a meeting with himself. And now back up onto the hill. Luis Torrens getting a start today. Late time's been tough to come by for Luis Torrens for the most part. Yeah. With Hedges coming off the concussion DL. After Sanchez getting the bulk of the backup time, but Torrens in there. Ball missing away. Myers at second, Caesar at first, one away here in the Padres' second inning. And to ends, it's a fly ball to left field. Duvall looking up into the sunshine out there, shy of the track, makes the catch. Runners tagging and moving up, and the throw to third base is not going to be in time. And safely there is Myers Caesar tagged up and moved to second on the long fly out for Luis Torrens. Now two down, but two in scoring position. Very smart base running. You score on a wild pitch, pass ball. As soon as this ball is hit, Duval retreating back to the track towards the wall. Then the race is on, and. Uh, Will Myers, Matt Caesar advance 90 feet. Second and third, two down to Nelson Lamet, the pitcher with a hack or strike one. Uh, the plate this year, one for 21. Yeah, just try to shorten up. Play a little game of pepper. You might find a hole, might, you know, dump one over Vado's head at first base. Nicely blocked by Barnhart, pitching the dirt outside. At third, Caesar at second, two away. Hey. 
strike call. Tenth start of the year for Luis Castillo. And that will just miss. To the breaking ball, and it's now two and two. I thought the umpire was going to ring him up. I thought so too. I thought it was a strike. Yeah, when he went right there, I thought he was going to go the old hee ha. And the benefit of the doubt, and now it is a one hopper that kind of explodes on Votto. Going to need Castillo to cover, and he just gets over there in time to retire Lamette and to end the inning. So the Padres will leave two in scoring position. Close play at first base. No score after an inning and a half from Cincinnati. Now his ability to throw it in a 1 0 count or a 2 0 count his willingness to throw it his ability to throw it for a strike brings him back into counts makes his fastball play up more and he becomes a true uh, uh, much tougher guy to face because uh, before you get to 2 0 they're all sitting on fastballs it's a good fastball it's a really good fastball but major league hitters turn 95 around when they know it's coming so uh, now he's putting just a little bit of seed of doubt in their head uh, and that mix is getting closer to a 50 50 mix than it was probably a 70 30 mix before. Well, the change they made certainly seems to be working. The slider often and early for Denelson Lamet and confidence in that pitch. Imagine you're a hitter and you hunt the fastball early. That's what all hitters are taught, right? Don't miss the fastball. Don't let it get by you. Well, pitcher throws a wrinkle in one for a strike. I tell you what, that makes you start thinking. Now, when you get to the ability to do that and then later in the count off the plate just a little bit to entice in the swing, then you're really doing something special. And I think that's what we're seeing, especially last time out. 49% sliders, fewer fastballs at 47% from Lamette. And the proof is in the pudding. He's getting better and better. Dealing with Scooter Jeanette to begin things here in the red second inning. And you know what I've discovered? Talked about this in the open as well. And he'll get burned once in a while. Every pitcher will. But we saw in Pittsburgh, he even threw some bad sliders that were swung on and missed. Bob Scalen made the point to where it was one at bat in particular Jordy Mercer he threw a couple of them up and out of the zone. Well he's got such a good one it looked like a fastball guys committed and before you know it it broke. They could connect and that worked to the advantage of Lamette. They weren't necessarily hangers but they were up. Yes sometimes the extra hanging slider works to your advantage. Or I should say the higher hanging slider. Extra is like when you're talking like sausage on a pizza. <laughs> Higher hanging slider. It's tough to get on top of it. The former Milwaukee Brewer Scooter Jeanette. He'll foul it off. He has played both second base and shortstop in this series so far for the Reds. High slinging percentage with two strikes. And Jeanette in the top five. Bryce Harper leading in that category. The battle here for Jeanette. Count evens up at two and two. That two two pitch prior to that two two right there. Up and away, right? What was the pitch prior to that one? The slider down and he foul. Go back in there. Have a swing over the top of it. Swing at a foul tip held onto by Luis Torrens. First strike out of the day for Lamette. Now this is not the slider down and in, but it's the back door type. Look at Torrens set up, breaking ball right there. Movement gets him. It's a nice slider. Really in the back of his mind right now, when in doubt, throw a slider. Hey, it's it kind of it. Yeah, absolutely. Slider. It can get you a grounder, it can get you a swing and miss. One out, three in a row now, retired by Lamette. Brings up Eugenio Suarez. I think if you have a slider like Lamette's, one of the first three pitches should be a slider. Regardless of the count. He 
has the best slider on the staff. You think about Chassin, you think about Perdomo. I think when you talk about velocity and break and depth, I think it would be up there. Breaking depth, that being the difference. Yeah, I yeah. think so, yeah. Um, Chassin's isn't as hard. I think it has a little bit more loop to it. Really hits Suarez here. It's like on the forearm and base runner here for the Reds with one down in the second inning. Ain't nothing wrong with this here. It's a fastball in. Right elbow. One out, one on. Same situation as the first inning. Worked around that. A single by Zach Cozart in the first. Now, Patrick Kiblahan, the former Padre, his first major league home run in a Padres uniform last year. Got his first major league grand slam against the Padres this year and in this series for the Reds. Two thirteen average into his 80th game this year for the Reds. Got a chance to play on a semi regular basis in the big leagues this year. Saw him in right field last night getting a start in center field. Joey Hamilton off today. Here's a classic example. Kiblahan likes the fastball, right? Can turn it around if he gets one. 2 0. Oh. Lamette misses with the slider. Does he make an adjustment, throw another slider here for a strike? Or try to locate a good fastball? Fastball in. The left field line, late break for Perella, headed over towards the stands, but he won't have a play. Well, defensively today for San Diego, their defense brought to you by your San Diego County Ford dealers. Jose Perella in left, Matt Caesar in center with Hunter Renfro in right, Corey Spangenberg at third, Jan Hervis Solarte at short, Carlos Azuaje at second, Will Myers at first, and Luis Torrens doing the catching. Caesar making his 10th start in center field this season. Swing and a miss, and it will get away. So to second base goes Suarez. That ball bounced way out front of home plate, over near the left handed batter's box. Kiblahan, he couldn't hit this with an oar. Hit batter and a wild pitch as Suarez at second base. Count even at two and two to Kiblahan. Throw him another one. Takes it the other way to right field, sink it fast, and out there in right field, diving and not making the catch is Renfro, but the runner goes back to second base. He trapped it out there in right field. Suarez was not sure, so he retreated to the bag at second. Thought he made, it, made the catch out there. Great effort by Hunter Renfro, and you're right, Don. That runner at second base, Suarez, he's kind of like in no man's land because if he catches it, he's got to go back and tag. If he sees daylight from his vantage point, he just didn't have enough time. He thought he caught it. He retreats back to second base, keeps the double play in order. Thank goodness that ball doesn't get by Hunter, and that's where Matt Caesar backs up in right field. So two on, one away. He said for Kivlahan, second hit off Lament today. Tucker Barnhart, uh, look at ball one. Four homers, 25 runs batted in, a 264 average. 84th game that Barnhart has caught this year. See, there's the slider behind 1 0 for a strike. Even the count. On the ground and a fair ball down the 
first baseline to right field into the corner. Suarez coming around from second base, going to try and score Kidlahan all the way from first. Here's the throw. It's late, and the Reds take a 2 0 lead. Tucker Barnhart with a two run double has the Reds on top, 2 0. Barnhart got to that baseball. Torrance set up inside. It's up. Maybe leaks a little bit. Just goes to show you, not a lot of room for error if you want to throw it inside. Inside the pillow and Will Myers. And Kimlahan, who does not have blazing speed because of where the ball was hit. Long trip for Hunter Renfro. He scores for first. So runner at second, one out. And Luis Castillo, the pitcher, fouls it back right here. Oh my gosh. You pulled a hamstring, it looked like. I went after it, and then I kind of backed off the last second. It was coming, coming, and then I, I bailed. It ended up hitting this monitor in front of me, and they go back out. Ugly finder. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> Swing and foul back. It was coming back hot. That's why I bailed at the last second. I think I had a chance. But did you see it? I did. It was. I thought you were going to like two hand it. Well, yeah. Granted, the monitor's right in front of I you. I got stuff here. I thought it was going to ricochet what? and hit me right in the face. Donnie, being the analyst, I got a big face. I've got to be honest. That's yeah. a tough play. That's a tough play. What I thought was going to happen was because I knew it was going to hit the monitor. Carry him off and hit you. Skim off and hit me right in the chicklets. Swing and a miss. Castillo strikes out for the second strikeout for We were just talking about that, was it yesterday or the day before, about how we are re relatively yes. close and how it's got to be a perfect pitch that's up and a you know guy working under it just perfectly. I brought that. I'm not going to throw it away. Okay, I, just, I thought it was going to hit right here right. and then go right there. Yeah. And it would have been really bad. Real bad. That's what I thought was going to happen. That's why I backed off. I didn't catch it. And I don't blame you. And that's a tough play. You got to go up and over the monitor. It's a tough play for any play by play guy. Lenny Casper could make that. Oh. <laughs> Walking lead off second for Barnhart. Two runs in here for the Reds in the second. Jesse Winker fly to right first time up. Did you get the ball? No. Hit off the monitor and went down. Oh, okay. Well, you can always get a baseball. Some lucky fan is going home with a souvenir. Right. That's great. Feel better about it. Strike in there, and it's two and one. Almost fell backwards, so that's where it got tricky. No bones, no, no, no bro good. No bones broken no, or anything. Feel good. You feel good? No. Nope. Stop it at two right here for the red, that runner in scoring position. You know, if you walk him right here, it's really not the worst fate. We'll then put runners at first and second, then a force at first, second, or third to get out of the inning. Strike call. Now go for the punchy. Slider. Why not? I say slider, yes. Absolutely. It's the pitch du jour. Barnhart at second base, two runs in. On the Barnhart double. And a grounder foul will do it again. Scooter Jeanette struck out to begin the inning. Suarez hit by a pitch. Took second on a wild pitch. Give Lahan single. And a two run double by Tucker Barnhart before Luis Castillo struck out. Second came for Lamette. Of the inning and of his outing. Now a 
Right. Payoff pitch to Jesse Winker. Swing and a miss. Elevates and strikes him out. Strikes out the side with two runs in the inning for the Reds. Two nothing Cincinnati. All right, Mike and Mark, thanks very much. As Luis Castillo now has a 2 0 advantage in this game. It's coming up with a couple of runs in the second. Yeah, speaking of the tribe, the Indians have lost six of their last nine games, scoring two runs or fewer five times in that span. So they need some uh, outfield pop. Jay Bruce. Yep. Hoping to provide that. You got Brantley in the DL, too. And as a result, though, even so, with the troubles that they've had, still the good pad in the yeah. AL Central. Four game lead to start the day over Kansas City. Four and a half over the Minnesota Twins. Who subtracted instead of added. Yeah, how about that? For the Indians, 29 and 24 on the road. That's fifth best in the majors. Although they have lost eight of their last 11 away from progressive field. And therefore, a strike two. Carlos is Wahe leading it off for San Diego here in the third inning. Grounded out to first base in the first. And of course, every time I think of Cleveland, I can't stop but thinking about our good friends Matt Underwood, Tommy Hamilton, Rosie, Archie Manning, Rick Manning, Terry good. Francona. Terry Francona. Good eggs over there, with Cleveland. Fly ball right field. Winker back to the edge of the track. Now back onto the grass. We're out number one. First time this year that Aswahe has led off for the Padres. Put a good ride into that one. One down. Corey Spangenberg coming up for Andy Green. Spangenberg struck out swinging in the first inning. One for ten in the series, been relatively quiet in this series. Tries to bunt his way on. Castillo off the hill will flip underhanded. Nice athletic play. Yep. Getting off the hill quickly to retrieve that. Two down. Don, you're just about to take the words right out of my mouth there because we were talking before how a kid, a pitcher, a player has it. When you look at them, they're on the mound. I mean, he bounced off that mound very quickly, very athletic for Castillo. Getting to that baseball. Four in a row retired by Castillo, and it brings up Jose Perella. One of the two walks handed out by Luis Castillo. Big hack there, and it's one and one. He has not had a one two three inning on the day as the first two outs here the third inning. Grab that outside corner but not getting it two and one. Back to the fastball blew it by him at ninety eight. He has touched ninety or uh, one oh one rather Castillo. Not today, but you know, in the past, they've had him at 101. Oh, did you see a little bit of movement there? Yeah, right at the end. Yes. You start talking about 100 here in Cincinnati. Reminds me of our oldest Chapman coming here and seeing him close out games. That'll miss, and Perella's got himself a two out walk. Second time he has walked today. Three base on balls allowed by Luis Castillo. Well, a little dose for second time around hitters here, starting with Aswahe. Now, Salarte, who flew out the left last time up, his second look at the young right hander. Salarte flied out to left field in the first inning, 0 for 1.
in the dirt and trying for second base is Perella. He's going to be very young. Took off aggressive. Not a bad idea, but Barnhart didn't have it get that far away from him, and he's able to throw out Perella at second base. Trying to get the second on the pitch in the dirt. Two nothing Reds. The Ohio River just outside Great American Ballpark here in Cincinnati. Beautiful day. The Reds and Padres playing the finale. Getaway day here. Last game of the four game series. Padres trying to gain a split. And the Reds have a 2 0 advantage to the bottom of the third inning we go. And Elson Lament allowing two runs in the second inning. Tough part of the order coming up here for Cincinnati. 2 3 and 4. All stars Zach Cozart, Joey Votto, Adam Duvall. All featured here in the third inning. Popped up. Foul ground that'll get into the seats. Behind the Reds dugout. 40th pitch of the day coming up for Lamette. Those aren't starting the day, hitting at 313. Now swings away. It's a high fly ball to left center field. Over comes Caesar. Out number one of the third inning. Incidentally, Zach Cozart has been credited with a base hit on that point earlier in the ballgame. Initially, the official score had given Carlos Esbahi an error on in short right field. They have changed that. And Cozart now has the benefit of a base hit, so no error for Esbahi. Three hits now for the Reds today. One down in the third inning. Joey Votto finding a 14 game hitting streak coming into today. Line out to left first time up. It's pretty good average, isn't it? Six games. Yeah, he's done well against San Diego. Yeah, hit the ball. Oh. Backstop on the fly. Yeah. Now it's all about adjustments. <laughs> Adjustments after pitches like that. <laughs> you want to let it? That's uh, in there for a strike. So today we have on a warm day a fan in the booth. And, uh, the and we're fan, not talking fryer fan or no no fan. no no we're talking a fan you know like uh, that gives you a little bit of a breeze. But Mud is sitting in front of the fan so none of the breeze can get around Mud to me. There are times when you move slightly, and I'll get a little bit of a breeze. Mm -hmm. But other than that, I get nothing. You know why? Because you're totally blocking. That is ball four. And Votto down to first base with one down. He had the right idea, Lamette. The 3 1 slider, it just missed. Tried to back door in. So now, righty on righty, try to roll a double play here. So what you're saying if I turn to the side or back to it there's no way you're getting there. No. If you're straight up to it. Nobody else enjoys any of the fan. It just stops at you. <laughs> one out one on for Adam Duvall. Fouled out to the first baseman. Will Myers in the first inning. Popped up. Nice. Myers coming down from first base. Calling. And catching out number two. I like how Will Myers takes charge there. I mean, there was no question. Terence had the mask off. As soon as this pitch is thrown, it's popped up, up and in, ties up to ball. Will Myers is taking charge. Terence, you know, he's kind of looking, he's shading his eyes, but Will's all over it. And Lament cruising over towards first base just in case he's needed over there. Two down here in the third inning. Lotto at first base and Scooter Jeanette, the batter. Struck out swinging in the second inning. I think it's possible at all he might move it a little bit so other people can benefit from the air. Have some of the air. Back 
going to. Uh, actually, Audrey's helping out now. We have a, another fan that she's brought over. Well, that's good, thankfully. The fan that we're see that fan. See now, if it, I now, sit like this, nobody gets any of the fan. Even if I sit this way, Donna gets nothing. So I moved it. But now there you get a little bit there. Once we move the fat this way. <laughs> Not penetrate the fat. <laughs> That'd be great, but it's Mark's fan. But now we have another fan. Yeah, here's your fan right which here. Which Audrey is kind enough to bring to Thank us. Thank you, really Audrey. Thank you, Audrey. Audrey! That's great. Got bags under my eyes. That's Bush League. <laughs> <laughs> now we both have a fan. This is great. Now we've got a great crew here in Cincinnati. Pitch 50. And a grounder foul outside of first. Lazar <laughs> flying out to center to begin the inning. Bono walked. The ball popped out to Will Myers coming down from first. So many options right here for Lamette. The fastball up and out of the zone. The slider down and in. Against Jeanette. He's got him right where he wants him. 0 and 2. Good pitch. See how defensive that swing was. Great location too. Down and away. Uh, Jeanette almost like one-handed that one, realizing, hey, I got to make some contact. At least follow it off to get another shot at it. Just flick of the wrist, all upper body right there. You can go backdoor slider here. You can go back to the fastball away. You can bounce the slider down and in. Off the bag at first, kind of standing in front of Votto over there. Fly ball headed out towards right center field. Run throw from right Caesar into right center, and the center fielder makes the catch. It ends the inning. Two nothing Reds. It's not even worth pronouncing it that city doesn't exist. Uh, I, I think uh, anybody who grew up in Lexington doesn't have a place in their heart for Louisville. So uh, at the end of the day, it's uh, it's a bleed blue kind of state, and then that bleeds up here into Cincinnati too. I think the majority of people in Cincinnati are smart and go with Kentucky as well. Now, one of your young charges, though, Kyle McGrath is from Louisville. Any grudge match going on between the two of you? Probably won't let him pitch again. <laughs> Andy Green talking about the grudge between Kentucky and Louisville and despite his promise not to let Kyle McGrath pitch in the ball game, he got him in last night and he did an outstanding job. I'm now joined by the parents of Kyle McGrath, Missy and Jim. Parents, congratulations. It must be a very proud moment. Thank you. It's just crazy. We can't can't even put it into words. Now, did you hear the rumor of Andy actually not letting Kyle get into the game? I heard that. It was after the fact that it's the UK UL rivalry is uh, a lot of fun, so I get that. And it worked out okay. Two scoreless innings. He was outstanding last night. Now, you guys have a, a very strong history here. Obviously, Louisville only two hours away. It sounds like Kyle grew up a Reds fan. Uh, sure. I so, yeah. yeah. I, think, I, think I mean, lots he's... of different teams at times, but yeah, we all, well, I was a Reds fan, so I'm still in. But. <laughs> not when the Padres. Well, it's hard for you to put on your Padres shirt. It can't be that tough, Dad. No, not when he's here. It's uh, it's real easy. So. Now, you, it was an interesting story. You were telling me that actually Adam Duvall went to the same high school, went to the same college, and he actually came over the other night to congratulate him? Uh, he did. He came, and uh, we had some other friends here that uh, Adam is friends with as well, and he sought Kyle out to congratulate him on uh, the big leagues, and uh, he's proud of him, and just like we are, like we're proud of Adam because he's a fine representative for the Reds. Now you guys came out in force last night because every time Kyle threw a strike, the entire stands were. were, were and now, what did Andy tell you guys after the game? Uh, didn't tell me. <laughs> we heard that he he said to Kyle, uh, you know, uh, bring your family. Uh, it's it's nice to hear the the, the cheering. And, Every game, you know, we, he liked it. So well, it sounded like actually he was saying that Joey Votto was looking back after each pitch, and you guys were almost distracting him. We didn't know if that's what he was actually doing, but uh, we were helping. Uh, we were helping. <laughs> it's hard to get out. So, uh, yeah, whatever, yeah. whatever 
it works, you know, with uh, with Joey because he's a great hitter. Congratulations, great to see Kyle out. There must be a very proud moment for all of you. Thank you. It is. It's unreal. And enjoy the ride, guys. Back over to you. All right. Thanks very much, Scan. A home run for Will Myers out to right field. Myers with his 13th and two in the last two days for Myers, and that cuts the Reds' lead in half. A 2-1 count for Will Myers, and we talked about adjustments. Well, let's go back to yesterday. Remember the two-run shot in the sixth inning? Where did he go? Opposite field. 98, outer half. Just get the big boy extended right there, and he takes it to right center field again. Struck out swinging in the second inning, getting his second look at Luis Castillo. Mentioned earlier about Castillo, remember the straight fastball, right? Well, that's what happens. That's the ninth home run he's given up in 57 and a third innings. High on the walk side, home runs. You have to learn to keep it down. Or if you're going to go up there, go up and out a little bit more. Strike three call. That throw to it takes with him the third strikeout for Castillo. Get a look at the home run. Yeah, let's go back to that 2 1 pitch. He wants it down and on contact. You draw a line that's right at the belt buckle, maybe a little lower. And he sends it on its way. So two down bases empty for Matt Caesar. Walked in the second inning, one of three walks given up by Castillo. So things to worry about if you're facing Castillo. You could get 98, you could get 97, you could get a changeup. There's the changeup there at 88. It's a good looking pitch, huh? Sure is. Same arm angle. Yep. Same got release point. Yep. It's got a little bit of run to it. I think it's got more run than drop to it. There's the slider. Which I agree with you is his third best pitch. Yep. Home run by Will Myers in this inning. Padres on the board. Caesar chops one towards third base, picked on the backhand by Suarez. Nice play. Cross the diamond and in time to get Caesar has got good speed. A solo home run for Will Myers. Myers, who homered last night, homers here today, and the Padres have cut the lead in half. It's now two to one, Cincinnati. Slider for Denelson Lament has been the story. Let's check it out today. 86. Remember the slider that's up and out of the zone can work for his advantage too. You bet. And then in the zone, hitters may be trying to be too quick for the fastball. They get the slider. The barrel lags, works underneath. You get a high pop fly working underneath the pitch. And Andy Green said also before the game today, trying to work it to where it's more like 50-50. Well, when you look at the splits this afternoon, 53% fastballs, 45 slider. Mix into the changeup very rarely. Two percent. And there's the breakdown. And that's what the skipper, Andy Green, and pitching coach Darren Balsey would like to see from Lament. To the bottom of the fourth inning we go. And Hanio Suarez made a nice play to end last inning. Defensively, five to three on the putout. Suarez leading it off, hit by a pitch. In the second inning, came around to score. There at 95. That's Caesar, the center fielder, over towards right center field for Suarez to go the other way. And they work him away, but in the dirt. There's that gap you're talking about. It's kind of a thick arrow, isn't it? Pitch high. Kind of 
look like the Washington Monument. Did it? Can I get another high home, guys? A little history class here and the Washington oh, Monument. Oh, Washington Monument. Yeah. Very nice. Swing and a miss, and Suarez goes down, striking out. Fourth strikeout for Lament. One down here in the fourth inning. Now that's the slider we know and love with two strikes. Terren set up. Down and away. Look at out of the hand. You can see the Fox tracks where the Fox vision where the tracking that slider. Looks like it's going to be a fastball for a strike and then out of the zone. One down here in the fourth inning. Patrick Kiblihan. So is the Telestrator toys different in every city? Yeah, it's different. This is a different program. You never worked at the Washington Monument before in no. Cincinnati? Watch your face. Kiblahan ducking back out of the way. Here's the side view. Oh, look out. Oh, watch you point him. Buzz the tower. Yeah. Close shave. Let's see what your options are. You get three hand solid. Yeah. Straight solid. Circle spotlight. Circle solid. Circle numbering. Give me the curve solid with something. What does that do? How about after this next pitch? Okay. Curve solid with A. Doesn't do anything. Oh, there. Oh. That's what <laughs> <laughs> And then uh, we got zigzag. Zig solid. Whoa. Yeah, when would you use that? I don't know. This ball four and down to first base goes Kiblahan with one down. Second walk allowed by Lament today. To the mound goes Luis Torres. See how they work to Tucker Barnhart here with one down in the fourth inning. Last time up, his first at bat in the second, he turned on the fastball in. He got to it quickly, kept it fair down that right field line, driving in two. Uh, knocked in Suarez and Kiblahan. So this is where I think the changeup comes into play for Lament against the lefty who likes to turn on the fastball. Pitch is a strike and the throws a good one and out at second base is Patrick Kiblahan. Not trying to steal. Nice throw by Luis Torrens. Nice going, Luis. Got a good pitch to handle. First movement, he is off and running. Quick release, a little high, but nice quick slap tag by Jan Hervis Salate. Salarte. Salate. Whatever. He's out. I'm watching too much Ray Donovan. <laughs> Salate and short. Hey, shorty. You got him. Two down. <laughs> Fouled off one and two. Well, the base is empty now to the caught stealing. Patrick Kiblahan gun down at second base. And he's seven from Lamette, but up. A couple of live arms today, both sides. Luis Castillo for the Reds. Nelson Lamette for the Padres. No pitch game to this point. Two down in the last of the fourth inning. Slider. And it's driven. Cleaned out, but foul. 
See if he goes with another slider here. Oh, he's hanging tough on that, isn't he? Mm -hmm. Back in the second inning with runners uh, first and second. Barnhart with a double down the line in the right field corner. It would score Suarez and Kiblahan and give the Reds at the time a 2 0 lead. Padres have gotten a run back. A solo home run by Will Myers. 2 2 foul straight back, and it's 2 and 2 still. Got a battle here. Fouling off sliders. Got to a fastball there to foul it back to get another chance. And once again, I, I say it again, this is where the changeup comes into play. Oh, yeah. Oh, he shook off the. He shook off the. Uh, Change up, fastball in, fastball away, slider. Full count out of Barnhart. Don't have to be perfect here. You got Luis Castillo, the pitcher, waiting on deck. I say another breaking ball. Even hey, throw up it, throw a change up. No, no, no. Slider so again. Yep. And he strikes him out with it. Nicely done. Fifth strikeout for Lamette. Through four innings, the Reds have got a 2 1 lead over the Padres. To the slider, he went. It's good for strike three. The good thing is that there's opportunity. There's a bad part of that, too, meaning that, that you don't have uh, enough stability here, which, which we don't. We don't have the stability in our pitching yet to the point where we're. Uh, where we want to be as a team and as an organization. However, we do feel like the t from a talent perspective that there's an awful lot of it in the system. And now it's our responsibility to, to make the most of it and for these young guys to really push to extract every little bit of last bit of uh, ability, talent, fight that they have. Brian Price talking about the development of young pitchers. We saw it yesterday in his staff with Adger Wojciechowski, and we see it again today with Castillo. They're going through a very similar thing as the Padres are, guys, in terms of trying to figure out that balance between pushing the young pitchers, pushing the envelope to find out what they're capable of, but not trying to put too much on their shoulders that can intimidate them or blow them early in their career. It's a fine balancing act. Brian Price is trying to figure out as well. Andy Green has done a great job, and we're seeing two examples of it here on the field today with Castillo and Lamette. Yeah, really, Andy Green's done a very good job of it the last two years. I think last year, too. The situation with Luis Perdomo all year, carrying the Rule 5 guy, and sure, pitched all year, never pitched above A ball before last year. A lot has to do with the organization. I know there were expectations this year for Cincinnati. Uh, different type of club, but um, the number of pitchers that the Reds have used, we talked about that, the rookies in particular. Right now they have three rookies in the rotation. It's 70 of the day. And it's grounded back up the middle for Luis Torrens into center field. There's a base hit to open up the fifth inning. So essentially last year when you look at Perdomo, right, he was learning at the big league level. You want to keep him in the organization, you got to keep him there the whole year. Learning on the job in the big leagues after pitching an A ball the year before. Now a team, and you look at the standings, right? You look at the standings, like you know the Dodgers. Are they going to do something like that? No. Are the Cubs going to do something like that? Probably not. Washington, no. The teams in contention, probably not, because they don't want to risk that one every five days to where you throw a rookie out there. You don't know what you're going to get. So hopefully it's the long term plan to have these guys pay dividends for a long time once every five days when they get some big league years underneath their belt. One drop down by Lamette. It is the pitcher Castillo that throws to first base. Sacrifice complete. Check back in with Bob Scanlon. Mark, question for you. I think you made a great point about where you are as an organization in terms of having to call up young guys because you need to win and you're putting a lot of pressure on guys to step up and be something they're not quite there yet versus hey this is part of the plan we have time to do it but the other part of it for me is also do you have a catcher back there 
that can handle these young players and help them through this learning experience. And I think the Padres are really an advantage having Austin Hedges working with these young guys. Your thoughts? Yeah, no, that's a great point. And, uh, you know, we always seem to focus on the pitchers. Um, but Hopper picked by Jeanette from the outfield drafts his throw in time. Nice play to get his Wahe. And, and Bob, I'll take it a step further, and I know you'll agree with me here, but to have a guy like Hector Sanchez, even though he's not the everyday guy, I think he's an influence on pitchers like Perdomo, Lamet, uh, even jo Jolie Chassin has been, you know, around the league a few times. Having Hector is such an advantage for the youngsters and the veteran pitchers alike. No question about it. And you brought up Jolie Chassin as well. I had an interesting talk with him the other day and his discussions that he's had with Luis Perdomo in particular, also Denelson Lamette. Uh, and, and just how receptive those young players have been to listening to him. And he says, Look, it's weird being the veteran guy, but I'm happy to share that knowledge. Well, a big hit here for Spangenberg into the gap in left center field. Coming around from third is Terence to tie the score two to two. So Corey Spangenberg with a big two out RBI to tie the game. Can you say clutch? That's pretty clutch right there. Yes, it is. He takes. Was that a was that a changeup off speed pitch? Any way you look at it, he stayed on that pitch the other way, high 80s. So yes, in fact, that was a changeup. So Corey staying on it nicely and taking that pitch exactly where it was thrown. So a tie game. Padres trail two nothing. It's two two, and here is Jose Perella. He's walked twice in this game. It's two of the three walks that Luis Castillo has allowed today. On the ground and into right field, a base hit for Perella. From second base, Benjamin coming in to score. Throw goes to second, and Perella with a two out RBI puts the Padres on top three to two. Nicely done. Perella is on base for the third time and he drives in a run. Spangenberg going to left center field. Perella way off the bag is Joey Votto. The dive can't get to it and the Padres still alive with two outs and taking the lead. That is some clutch hitting by the Friar in this inning. Jan Herbis Salarte with Morello at first base and Salarte sends one to right field. That's going to get in for a base hit. Up to second base goes Perello. And the Padres have put together now four hits here in the inning. A couple of runs. Runners at first and second with two down. First hit of the day for Salarte. Swinging early. Warrants a visit from Mac Jenkins, the pitching coach for the Reds. Coming up with runners at first and second. Already had a good day. Singled in the second inning and then homered in the fourth inning. Will had a home run here last night and does it again here today. The matinee. Almost a carbon copy, huh, Don? Going yep. the opposite field. Very nice. Wearing out right center field. So two for day, two on the day. And that'll Ooh. drop in there for strike one to Myers. Second base, Solarte at first. Myers pops it up. First base way, Joey Votto he is there to make the catch. That ends the inning. And the Padres come up with two runs. A couple of big hits. Corey Spangenberg with a gaffer out to left center field ties the game. And then Jose Perello with a base hit puts the Padres on top, three to two, halfway through.
All right, Mike and Mark. As it is three to two now, Padres have jumped on top, reached a two-run deficit, and now have a lead. The pitcher Luis Castillo leading it off. Strikeout victim in the second inning. Nelson Lamette working with the lead for the first time today. Pitcher to pitcher here. To right field and Renfro coming in to make the catch on the liner that was kind of slicing away. Well, as Scott was just talking about Dodgers securing their 80th win of the year last night and teams with 80 plus wins after 113 games in a season. How have they done? Well, of course, the Yankees beat the Padres back in 1998. 84 and 29 went on to win the World Series. That just did the Cardinals. Mariners lost the ALCS in 2001. Athletics losing the World Series in 31. World Series champion Philadelphia Athletics in 1929. What will happen to the Dodgers in 2017? You know, plain and simple. I mean, it, it, you can disagree with me, but they've, they've got to win, right? They've yeah. got to win the whole thing. With the move they've made, the record they have now, if they don't, it's everything else is a disappointment. To me, a lot weighs on the health of Clayton Kershaw. Absolutely. I mean, Obviously, it's not jumping out there with a hot take going out there on the limb <laughs> <laughs> by any means. But I mean, if he's not right, yeah, then I could see it not going that great. And they're still pretty deep. But if you have Kershaw, you should win. 2 0 2 Winker strike over the inside corner going into today in 17 series that the Dodgers have played in 14 0 and 3. On the ground, a grass cutter to first base. Myers will take it himself to the bag. Two down. <laughs> Zach Cozart coming up. The All Star. A base hit in the first inning. Fly down to center in the third. One for two. Oh, that looks good. Yeah. Some of us who are having a dessert already in the booth right now. Yeah, one thing that's nice here in Cincinnati is they keep the frozen yogurt machine open <laughs> during the game. How's that diet going? <laughs> <laughs> Tell me you're dieting. This is part of the diet? It's the only thing I've eaten today. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, enjoy. Don't let, don't let us get in the way of you. In between innings. Dieting. This one is grounded foul. Down beyond the Padres dugout. Let me ask you something. Try to put an analogy together with the Dodgers and the record, right? Yep. And if they don't win the World Series. It's almost like, is this a fair analogy? It's like you go through law school and like you're the top student, right? And then you take the bar exam and you tank. Right? Uh, yeah. Yes. I mean, you're the best student in your class. Right. You graduate with honors. You're the you should you should pass yeah. the bar exam. Yep. yep. But you tank. There's a fly ball into shallow left field. Perella coming in, and he'll take charge. Step in front of Caesar to make the catch. It ends the inning. Through five, Padres have a three-two lead. Back to the Reds fourth inning last night. Adam Duvall at the plate. Bases are full of Reds, right? Well, Hunter Renfro, he kind of started back a little bit on the fly ball. He eyes it perfectly. 81.85.1 feet. Long run for Hunter Renfro, saving at least a couple runs with two outs there. A nice play by the probably right fielder. Swing here to pop up foul off to the right out of play. On a run throw, striking out in the second, striking out in the fourth inning. 
three total strikeouts for Castillo. Ground ball to short. Gozar to his right. And toss to first in. Plenty of time to get Renfro for the first out of the inning. Now it's time for the unlimited baseball break. Brought to you by T Mobile. Well, Jay Bruce acquired by the Indians in a waiver deal from the Mets for a minor leaguer, bolstering their outfield situation. Wilson Contreras, who has been on fire for the Cubs lately and has been batting cleanup for the Cubs. Strained hamstring up an MRI today, likely going on the DL. And you Darvish getting a start against the Diamondbacks. That hurts the Cubs. Yes, no it does, no it. doubt. He was on fire, a big part of the way they were playing lately, which has been much better in the second half. And catching. And like you said earlier, the omission of Clayton Kershaw, now you Darvish, trying to pick up some slack there for the Dodgers, like they really need it right now. But anyway, hey, you know, get them tuned for the next six weeks or so before they enter the playoffs. Cubs also got Alex Avila, the trade deadline, so that right. helps out. Yep. He's been playing some too, but Contreras has come up big. His bat has been big. And the biggest key for the Cubs in the second half has been the ability of their starting pitching to go deeper into games. Foul back by Matt Caesar. Yeah, there was a run there where the Cubs weren't going deep. The ERA was like north of four and a half. Yep. And how about Avila? There was a nice article written somewhere about how his dad being the GM of the Tigers yep. and trading his son and what that was like. You know, business is business, family affairs is family affairs, whatever, but that's that, tough. That's got to be a weird <laughs> situation. That's a second goal round with Avila. Really a bounce back year. That old concussions been a problem for him over the years. Not alone in that category as far as catchers go, though, yeah. in today's game. In the air, down the left field line, foul. It's 94 Castillo and it's a fly ball headed out to right field for a winker makes a catch route number two so two way in the top of the sixth inning and bring up the Padres catcher Luis Torrens he's got a base hit today single to center score the Padres game tying run run number two in the fifth inning. Be pretty hard on Torrens. Not a lot of playing time, long time in between the bats generally for him, but he's done a nice job and one for two today. But it's got to be tough. Rule five guy, the Padres are carrying. Not playing every day, maybe, you know, like today, day game after a night game. Oh, that in on the kitchen, grounds it to third. Suarez's throw is in time, and that is the end of the top of the sixth inning through five and a half. It's 3 2 Padres. Summary as Tucker Barnhart drives in a pair of runs to put the Reds off top two to nothing. A couple runs coming in for the Reds in the bottom of the second inning. Padres would answer though. Home run solo shot to right center field for Will Myers, his 23rd of the year. Padres would tie it up and then Jose Perella drives in Corey Spangenberg from second base and puts the Padres on top three to two. That's where we are right now, heading into the bottom of the sixth inning. Starters today, Lamette, five innings, three hits, couple of runs. He's got the lead. Luis Castillo has given up three runs in six innings. And Will Myers, two for three. Spangenberg, one for three. Good ball game today. Tay baseball from Cincinnati. Joey Votto leads it off here in the home half of the sixth inning. I like how Denelson Lamette has bared down after those two runs in the second, enabling his club to bounce back and take the lead. Going through the heart of the order. That's be the third time now. Going through the heart of the order. Motto 
fly down to the warning track in the first inning to left field. Walked in the third. Coming in with a 14 game hitting streak. And he will take another walk. Second walk of the day for Votto. Third allowed by Lamette. MLB.com at bat is your number one mobile app for live Padres baseball. Stay connected with a fully customizable experience. The Padres home screen icons and app features, as well as game day, live game video highlights, radio broadcasts, and statcast news, and more. Download MLB.com at bat today. Well, just 89 pitches for Lamette, but uh, Andy Green going to make a pitching change here. So the pitching change from Cincinnati is 3 2. It's like Craig Stammen coming in. No, sign up for the Padres Club card today. And by Jerome's Furniture, where Jerry's price is the lowest price every day. It's a beautiful day in Cincinnati, where the Padres have a 3 2 lead. Nobody out here in the bottom of the sixth inning. Pitching change is brought to you by El Cajon Ford. Craig Stammen into his 41st Padres game of the year. Last time out for Craig was against the Pirates. He's back on the sixth, so he is well rested. An inning plus for him. Inning and third to be exact. The righty on righty here, picking up to Nelson Lamette. Hey. Let's strike one to Duvall. A little surprised to see Lamette come out after just to what 89 pitches. Well, four wide ones to Joey Votto. So many ways to look at it. Andy Green knows best. Talking with Darren Balsley, a number of factors probably could come into play. Wants a fresh arm out there, a new look against the heart of the lineup third time around. Grounder towards third base. Spangenberg will go to second for one on to first for two. Double play. Nicely done. Five, four, three on the twin killing. Padres were in a shift on the left side, and Smahe heads over to second base. For two outs. Maybe he knew Craig Stem was going to throw a ground ball to the third baseman here, and Corey Spangenberg going to start it for him. That'll do. First twin killing of the day for either side. Brings up Scooter Jeanette. Struck out swinging in the second. Flight out of center field in the third. Craig's been throwing the ball extremely well. He's allowed, allowed just one earned run the last 13 outings. Used in a lot more high leverage situations. Yeah. Until the confidence in him from his manager has clearly grown throughout the year. He started kind of uh, the mop up guy. Yep. Coming in after some bad starts. In fact, in those 13 games since July 5th, an ERA of 0.69. Towards right center field, that's going to get down for a base hit. Caesar cuts it off, a wide turn at first for Jeanette, but throws the brakes on. Two out base hit. See how quickly Caesar got to that ball to prevent it from getting to the gap and also quickly getting it back into second base. The former Villanova quarterback rolling to his left. Rolls to his left. And it dumps a little pass over the middle. Two down, Jeanette at first. Eugenio Suarez stands in on the right side. Jeanette first hit for the Reds since back in the second inning they compiled the two runs yes you did did you, did you even hear guys in the dugout from the field Mike right part of the game just like you're in the game. It's like you're on the bench. 
it just it comes out. Yeah. Can't help it. Well, that double play grounded into by Adam Duvall. Closes the book on to Nelson Lamette. Five plus three hits. Two runs. Walk three. Struck out five. With a chance for his seventh win of the year, needs a bullpen to help out. Runner goes and a pitch swung on a grounded foul. Good jump for Jeanette, but all for not on the foul ball is going to come on back. Taken off for second is Jeanette. No throw. He'll get there. Took a chance on a ball in the dirt and advances into scoring position, representing the tying run. Good secondary lead by Scooter Jeanette. He's got speed, first of all, but what you see, daylight. Right? There. And you don't even have to be fast on base pads. A slow base runner. Shuffle, shuffle. Daylight, gotta go. Two two to Suarez. And it's a full count now. Stand coming in with a runner in first, nobody out of deuce. The five four three double play. And a single and a wild pitch later. You got Jeanette representing the tying run for the Reds out at second base. Eugenio Suarez waiting on a 3 2 pitch. And did he go? No. Ball four and down to first base goes Suarez. Just walk allowed by Stammen. Pretty close. We'll see. What do you got? I think he held up. Yeah. So two on, two down, and Patrick Kiblahan. And on base twice today. Single to right and a walk. And that pitch up and in, but hit it on the knob. No, got him on the hand. That's going to load the bases. Something I thought it was the bat, but it wasn't. It's that uh, hard plastic. Yeah. Ballsley headed out there, tying run 90 feet away. Base is loaded now for Cincinnati. And Ballsley out to talk to Stammen here as they get ready to deal with Tucker Barnhart, who already has a two run double in this game. And I tell you what, that strikeout to end the fourth inning for yep. Barnhart, that was a tough battle. He fouled off a lot of good pitches. Ultimately, Lament put him away. Two Padres on top right now, but it's in jeopardy. Reds threatening here in the sixth inning. Bases filled with Reds. Jeanette at third, Suarez at second, Kiblahan at first, and Tucker Barnhart, the hitter. First pitch swinging, grounds one to second base. Suarez will go to first and out of the jam. Is Stammen. Tough throw right there, but a nice play by Myers to end it. 3 2 Padres.
Travis Wood first pitch as a San Diego Padres. In I think Ted is, is one of the best there is at getting excited. You know, my style is probably a little bit more subdued, but I think that's part of what makes us a good balance. You know, the Chinese proverb, you find something in love, you'll never work a day in your life. That's me. Tomorrow on Padres POV, presented by Nissan, take you behind the scenes of Padres Radio and show you the faces behind the broadcast. Tune in tomorrow after Padres Live. 3 2. Padres have lead over the Reds as we head to the seventh inning. And nicely done by Stammen. Pitched his way into trouble and out of trouble. And Barnhart swinging at the first pitch. Get out of that jam. Dusty Coleman pitch hitting. For Stammen. And he takes strike one. Ninety three pitches for Luis Castillo, the red starter. One, two, three, sixth inning. Only one, two, three inning of his outing to this point. And gave him a chance to come back out for the seventh, at least to begin it. On the ground foul outside of third. And Coleman down one and two. Getting a lot of reps at shortstop for the Padres and producing as well. Had a big game Saturday in Pittsburgh. Three hits and a home run. Also stole a base. Yeah, triple shy of the cycle in that game for Dusty Coleman. Put a charge, he hit it out in the shrubbery at PNC Park. Straight away center field. Swing and a miss gets a long way away from Barnhart the catcher and reaching will be Coleman. So he strikes out and reaches on a wild pitch I believe. I get a long way away kicked off the umpire and over by the on deck circle. I don't know maybe a pass ball. Yeah I'm looking at that I'm calling a pass ball that was a change up. Barnhart could not catch it in the webbing of his glove. Drop third strike runner aboard. So a pitching chain coming up here. Brian Price, the manager, headed out there. The lead runner getting on for the Padres here in the seventh inning. On top three to two. And the pitching change. At least Castillo's day is done. We'll step aside from Cincinnati. 3-2 Padres. Offers on our most exciting lineup. Shop at choosenissan.com. And by Petco, where the pets go. Back in Cincinnati with the Padres on top three to two. Holding on to a 3 2 lead here. Statue of Johnny Bench here at Great American Ballpark in Cincinnati. Uh, lead runner getting on. Called it a wild pitch, I believe. Could have been a pass ball. On the strikeout, Goldman getting to first base, and now Aswahe taking a pitch up. They did rule it a pass ball. That allowed Coleman to get on. Wandy Peralta into the game now for the Reds. Well, three out of four now for Peralta in this four-game series against San Diego. He's 52nd on the year. Four seamer, slider, mixing a changeup and a two seamer. Lined a fair ball down the right field line into right field as Iswahe will stop at first base to third goes Coleman. And Iswahe, the throw went behind him at first. So now they got him in a rundown. And applying the tag for the out. So right there, Swahe running into an out with a throw going behind him from the right fielder Winker. He does get Coleman to third base, but should have been first and third and nobody out. Yeah, no doubt about that one. Just a little over aggressive base running there as this ball. I got to keep a, an eye on. Yeah, too big of a turn there. I mean, there's no way, there's no way that Winker's going to try to go to third base. To get that runner. Now you're caught in a pickle. Nine three six four. Infield in all the way around as Spangenberg takes a pitch outside. I believe you are correct. Yes. Would love to obtain some insurance here in the 
Top half of the seventh inning with one out. Coleman 90 feet away. Infield in. And Spangenberg going to check swing foul. Well, time now for the Bill Howe plays of the game. Corey Spangenberg with a gapper out to right center field. That would tie the game. And then Jose Perella with a base hit into right field. Scores Spangenberg with the Padres on top three to two. That's where we are with one out in the seventh. Pitch in the dirt, nicely blocked by Tucker Barnhart. Well, you can really see Peralta the first two pitches here. Those last two, I should say, in the dirt, trying to work something down and utilize that infield being in, in on the grass. And Corey, on the other hand, just an easy fly ball to the outfield to elevate something to get that run home. To throwing hard at 98, but missing. Only behind three and one. As you mentioned, lots of work in this series. Yeah. Three out of four. He walks him here, then the infield can back up. First and third, double play depth. Little dribbler in front of the plate. Out goes Barnhart. He'll throw in time to first base. He retires Spangenberg and no advance for Coleman at third base. That's a big out. Two down here in the seventh. Well, the day after the Padres score five or more runs, get 50% off any regular menu price online order at PapaJohns.com. Enter promo code Padres5. A couple of batters and back to the pen again for Brian Price with two outs now in the seventh inning and Jose Perella coming up. Price will make another change and we'll see the third pitcher of the day for the Reds. Padres have a 3 2 lead from Cincinnati. Saturday Aaron Judge looks to continue his incredible rookie season as he leads the Yankee attack against Mookie Betts and the Boston Red Sox Major League Baseball Saturday at 1230 Pacific on FS1. Drew Storen comes into the game here with two outs in the seventh inning and a runner at third base in a tight game. He pitched in game one of the series take check that game two of the series. In the seventh inning, yep, a couple runs, struck out two and two hits. Not bad splits for the veteran right-hander. And as we mentioned earlier, that's a huge run at third base. Hey, we've seen some two-out clutch hitting this afternoon. Kind of a hitch in his delivery. Bit of a pause. Yep. See Perella batting. He's been on base three times in this game. Walked twice and single. Drive in the go ahead run now, trying to drive in another one. The Padres, an insurance run. It's 2 0. Oh. How cool is this? Storin and Barnhart battery, right? High school teammates. That's pretty cool. And to make it even better for the pitching staff, how about adding Lance Lynn to that mix? From the Redbirds. That's really cool. A heck of a team. Yeah. Throwing to your high school battery mate in the big leagues. One behind here, three and zero. Oh. Two outs, top of the seventh inning. Padres have a three-two lead. And that's ball four, four straight balls, and down to first base goes Perella. There's a third walk he has drawn today, fourth time he's been on base. Fourth walk allowed by Reds pitching. Runners at the corners, and Jan Herbis Solarte coming up. Rice brought Storm in in the righty righty matchup, and he walks him on four pitches. Harvis today is flying to left, grounded back to the mound, and single to right field. Fouls it off himself for strike one. Smell a big fly right here? It's like a hit right here. Yeah, that would be nice. 
Mike Storm's only given up six home runs in 46 frames. This being his 49th game. Harris is one for one against him with a home run. Chops this right side to the second baseman, Jeanette from short right, and the throw in time. Padres will lead two men on. Seventh inning dress from Cincinnati. Padres have a 3 2 lead. It's presented by your San Diego Hyundai dealers. Beautiful day today in Cincinnati for the final game of this four game series. And the Padres have the lead. They trail 2 0. Lead it three to two. A couple chances to add on, but not able to do it. Some changes here. Dusty Coleman staying in the game after pitch hitting in the seventh. And looks like Solarte coming out of the game. New pitcher is Kirby Yates. Third of the day for Andy Green. He pitched Saturday against the Pittsburgh Pirates, so he is well rested. 43rd game for Kirby. And now uh, a little bit more range and uh, glove out there as Jan Harris Salarte calls it today in the big leagues. Dusty Coleman now playing shortstop after pitch hitting there in the ninth spot. Speaking of pitch hitting, Billy Hamilton is coming up to pitch it here. The speeds through had the day off until now. So lead it off here in the home half of the seventh inning with the Reds trailing by a run. 253 homers, 30 runs batted in into his 107th game of the year. Bob Desuaje, uh, two base hits the other night here in Cincinnati. Two great catches out there, one against the wall, and the other moving from left center to right center. Also stole his major league leading 45th base in this series. Greg Stammen went an inning. Gave up a hit. No runs. Walked a batter. Hit a batter. And did not strike anybody out. That's still the pitcher of record right now for San Diego. Swing and a miss for Hamilton. One and two. Jesse Winker on deck. Then Zach Cozart. Anybody gets on. Joey Bono will have a chance. To the bullpens now. A tight one today in Cincinnati. In the air to left center field. Caesar and Perella, and it's Perella in front of Caesar to make the catch. Round number one of the seventh inning. Top of the order for Jesse Winker now coming up for the Reds. Winker today has fly to right, struck out swinging, and grounded out to first base. Three unassisted. Two for ten in the series for the Reds' right fielder. You know, Don, you made a good point uh, talking about Craig Stammen coming in. When your starter can't go six or seven, it's so important to have that guy. Like a stamina and piece together the game. Now you hand it over to Yates. Okay, still a lot of baseball left here in the bottom of the seventh, but still, when you collectively have those guys that you can count on to chew up an inning, inning plus, maybe a righty lefty, you know, you go an inning and then a third, and then turn it over. If those guys are like a Yates and a stamina, and then you go beyond that, if they're throwing the ball, it's this 3 2 lead here that it's so huge to try to preserve that lead and that victory especially when you take into account the two huge pieces of the bullpen were traded to the trade yes Bookter and Mauer. Mauer. Bookter, yeah. yeah and they were the end of the game we're talking seven eight or in that case eight nine that hand and now hand at the yeah. end by himself Guys left here have done a nice job. And had finished the game here the other night. The game the Padres won. Non save situation, but did finish it off. And now with 
eight saves on the year. Eights with a 3 1 to Winker. And that's ball four, a one out walk to Winker. After ball game today, the Padres will head to Los Angeles to begin a series against the L.A. Dodgers. Cody Bellinger having his, no question, rookie of the year season. Five games against the Padres hitting at 304. Yasiel Puig has had a very good year. Second of the Dodgers with 21 home runs this season. And Rich Hill, my first seven shutout innings against the Padres. 11 strikeouts. Bellinger slugging 788, five homers, seven runs bet in, eight runs scored in eight games this month. This kid is just unbelievable. He's got 33 home runs. This kid's gonna hit 40 home runs this year. And yep. he got called up late April. Yeah. And Adrian Gonzalez one of the DL for the first time. Look inside out. and Cozart gets hit. So now first and second with one out. A walk and a hit batsman. Second straight inning that's happened to a Padres reliever. Stammen walked Suarez then hit Kiblahan. Uh, right on the jersey. Barely got him. Yeah. Oh this is where you order up the double play. Joey Votto coming up. Tough AB coming at you right here. He is grounded into 11 double plays this year. The leader in that category for the Reds is Suarez with 12. Votto has flat out to left. And walk twice in the game. Five for 12 in the series. Remember, there's been a couple of babies where he's swung at the first pitch. He is again. Can't get it this time. And that's how you counter with that slider. Runner in scoring position. We know that Joey Votto likes to look at a lot of pitches, work the count, but sometimes he will ambush you. And Kirby Yates probably thinking right along with him, and he throws up the wrinkle. Did Torrens take that one away from him? I thought that was a pretty good pitch. Well, it's a strike out of the oh, hand. Yeah, it was. Wow. Should be 0-2. And 11 double plays this season. He's grounded into. Perfect time right here. Check swing. Did he go? No. Of course not. Oh, oh, oh. oh my gosh. If he hits it, it's a double. <laughs> but of course, it's Joey Votto up there. Right. Yates didn't get the call on the slider, and he doesn't get the call on the check swing. Strike call, two and two. And Andy Green coming out of the dugout here. With the count of two and two to Votto, and he's going to make a change. Oh, he's going to switch it up to a lefty, Torres? Wow. Kirby Yates looking around over his shoulder, like to the bed, like, what's going on? Or is he going to go to hand early? Pitching change here with a count of two and two. Brad Hand coming in. Three two. Padres. One out. The Reds have runners at first and second. And a count of two and two to Joey Votto. New pitcher of the Padres closer, Brad Hand. One out. You bring in your closer in here to face the best hitter, one of the best hitters in baseball. You've got a two two count. 
Andy Green's banking on his best pitcher out of the bullpen against the Reds hitter to shut it down right here with the one run lead. With still plenty of baseball left. Yeah, we're in the seventh inning. Pitch in the dirt, full count. And inherited that two and two count, and now it's a full count. Very little room here for error. Bottle backs out. Winker reached on a walk. Cozart on a hit by pitch. Got to throw him a breaking ball here, don't you think? That Brad Hand slider. They off pitch. And it's ball four. He walks in to load the bases. Fastball. Just missed off the plate. We know how good of an eye Joey Votto has of the strike zone. And you know, I know it is what it is. But Kirby Yates had him struck out anyway. Base is loaded, one out. And Adam Duvall now with a chance here. Reds trailing by a run. Base is loaded, one out here in the seventh. Side for ball one. Reds have had their chances. They left the bases loaded in the sixth inning. In a one run game. Now they get the bases loaded here in the seventh with one out. All in his career against hand. No success. 0 for 3 and two strikeouts. Swing and a foul tip, one and one. Ball, no success so far today. Fouled out, popped out, rounded into a double play. Kirby Yates lifted from the game with a count of two and two to Joey Votto. Looking on from the Padres dugout. Well, remember it was in the tenth inning when Osuna from the Pirates rounded that double play with Brad Hatt out on the mound. To send it into extra innings. Strike two. Cruising right there, one and two. Good sweeping breaking ball. Outside corner. Her at third, Cozart at second, Vado at first, one out here in the seventh inning. Down and in, and that is ball two. Good play there by Torrens. Keep it in front of him. Two and two. Without the benefit of a hit in this inning. Swing and a miss, and now he strikes out as it gets away briefly from Torrens, but. Bases are loaded and first base occupied, so Duvall strikes out. It's big out, two down here in the seventh. Righties, lefties alike, and you know what? Credit Luis Torrens. And that is one heck of a job smothering that ball. Great position. That ball ends up right in front of him to prevent that runner from scoring. Now, Scooter Jeanette. 
who singled in the sixth inning, a one for three day for the Reds' second baseman. It's a fly ball to right field, pretty deep. Renfro going back onto the track at the wall. That ball is gone. A grand slam. Scooter Jeanette is hit it out of the yard. The Reds have come from behind and taken with one swing of the bat a six to three lead. Lefty on lefty. And you know what? That's that's a classic case of missing with location. It was a breaky ball left on the inner half and up. And we know what Scooter Jeanette can do when he pitches in that situation. Climbing the wall, Hunter Renfro giving the last chance effort there, but no chance for the Padre right fielder. And the Reds have doubled up on the Padres. Interesting moves by Andy Green here in the seventh inning. One zero, -oh. and a fly ball struck pretty well to left center field. That ball is back, and that ball is gone. Suarez hits a home run. The Reds go back to back and take a seven-three lead. That with the grand slam now Suarez with a home run to left center. One oh fastball. Outer third. Reds taking some good hacks here in this inning. All based on the poor location of those pitches. They're just taking advantage of it. Patrick Kiblahan will take strike one. Padres had a 3 2 lead heading into this inning, but a five run seventh so far for Cincinnati. Chopped to third on the backhand span. Jaberg, the throw is in time to end the inning. But a five run inning, including a grand slam by Scooter Jeanette, has the Reds on top 7 3. Reds on top in the ballgame 7 to 3. And Billy Hamilton staying in the game after he pinch hit in center field. New pitcher is Austin Bryce, and Will Myers leads it off here in the eighth inning. I don't think I've ever seen a situation like that. 2 2 count, bringing in your closer in the nope. seventh inning to face a left handed hitter. That's a first for me. Any, any situation. No. Nope. Well, Austin Bryce, he pitched uh, earlier in the series, eighth and ninth inning on Tuesday. A couple of strikeouts. We saw Andrew Miller, of course, be used differently right. in the postseason last year, but in a regular season game like this, very interesting. Kirby Yates seemed to be stunned as Andy Green was headed out to take him out. He was looking over his shoulder like, who's up? And you know what? I mean, in this game of baseball, you go through, you see things, you come to the ballpark, you never know what you're going to see, and that's one of those situations where I, I kind of mark down MC in my book. Manager's choice. Find out post game. What the thought process was there? Well, last night, Will Myers with a home run. Good sign for Will, especially going the other way. It's generally when he's back on track again, and he does it again today the other way. 23 now in the year for Myers. Takes a strike over the outside corner for out number one of the eighth inning. 
Thanks to Bryce with a strikeout to begin the year. One down and Hunter Renfro coming up. Over for three in the game, has struck out twice and grounded out. Yank that. This Castillo started the game, gave up the three runs the Padres have, and when he left, he was on the hook, on the hook no longer. On the Peralta, two thirds of an inning, no runs. Drew Storen, third of an inning, no runs. And now Austin Price, fourth arm used today by Brian Price. Left side, backhanded it short by Cozart, two down in the eighth inning. This copyrighted telecast is presented by the authority of the San Diego Padres. It may not be reproduced, retransmitted in any form. The accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the San Diego Padres. Two down in the eighth, and it brings up Matt Caesar. He has walk grounded out and fly out. Caesar getting the start at center field. Should mention that Patrick Kiblahan moved from center field to right field when Billy Hamilton stayed in the game in center. So Kiblahan now in right. And coming out of the game is Winker. Strike two, good breaking ball, one and two. To right field, Kiblahan moving in and over, makes the catch, and the Reds have a one, two, three, eight inning behind Austin Price. Seven, three Reds. will head to Los Angeles to begin a weekend series against the Dodgers. Clayton Richard, 5 and 12 with a 5.17 earned run average. May match up against Rich Hill, 8 and 4, the 3.47 ERA. We'll get you started at 6.30 with Padres Live, and then it's the Padres and Dodgers from Dodger Stadium. Of course, Cody Bellinger will be in that series, and he'll be the rookie of the year, no doubt. Yeah. The question is, is he in the MVP conversation also? <laughs> Uh, that's a good discussion because uh, my goodness 33 home runs more on Bellinger after we talk about Phil Maton try to hold the Reds at seven the Padres are in slam range that's very important for the young right hander to keep him right there now ball by the mound to his Wahe at second base and one down here in the eighth inning Tucker Barnhart retired well, the other candidates besides Bellinger Bryce Harper Nolan Arnato Charlie Blackman Paul Goldschmidt. You have two that are Rockies, and that sometimes comes into play when you're talking about Coors Field. My pick would be Bryce Harper. Yeah, once again, you know, there's so much to talk about. That's what's great about baseball. I say that um, looking at after all is said and done, I think that's your guy right there. Yeah. What do you think? That's my pick. Hey, nothing against all the other guys. Bellinger, rookie of the year, no doubt. Arnado's defense plays into it for me too. The glove is huge, yep. no question. You're right, Bellinger could hit 40 home runs. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Billy Hamilton batting for the second time. Pinch hit in the seventh.
as Rocco has come out on deck here, the bat on the pitcher's spot. Cody Bellinger was called up to the big leagues April 25th at Petco Park. And he's got 33 home runs. Yeah, Billy Hamilton strikes out. That is job number two of the eighth inning. Eight two up, two down in the eighth. So pitch hitting in the pitcher spot. As Mazzarocco, first appearance of the series. Take strike one. Strike two. Head to the ninth inning. Terence Coleman and Aswahe scheduled to bat. Anybody gets on, Corey Spangenberg will have a chance. As Rocco fouls it off to the right out of play. Let's revisit our keys to the game. Brought to you by your San Diego Honda dealers. Rattle Reds early ain't happening no runs first three innings one in the fourth two in the fifth slide into the seventh for Lament only five frames this afternoon 89 pitches for Denelson. F for Mark again today. Mr. Blutarski, you have no great point average. <laughs> Fat, drunk, and stupid is no way to go through life, son. <laughs> Boy. They off pitch. And that drops almost into the strike zone. A little bit high. So a two out walk here for Mezzarocco. Pitch hitter down to first base. And that'll bring up the all star, Zach Kozar. Got a single back in the first inning. Fly down twice and last time up reached on the hit batsman. Came around to score the fourth Reds run. A grand slam by Scooter Jeanette in a five run bottom of the seventh inning for Cincinnati. Strike one and one. Bill Maton, the fifth arm used today. That charge with two runs, Yates two, and three by hand, who allowed two and hundred runners to score. Very defensive swing right there by Kozar. Not comfortable. One and two. Ball up from Phil Mayton and the Reds All Star. 
adds on for his red legs. Phil Maton not overpowering. You know, he can get guys to swing up and out of the zone with that fastball. Just not up enough. Joey Votto has walked three times today. His 14 game hitting streak on the line here. As he sends one foul down the left field line out of play. Line out to the warning track in the first inning. That's uh, three walks and he scored a run. I think my eight for over under for home runs in the series combined was blown out of the water. <laughs> I think so. It started really fast, but I don't know. I don't know. I'm just trying to go back in your uh, book there. Chop chop. One, two. I think it was like five the first night, right? Five the first night. Yeah. Just wearing out left center field. He wants it in. Leaks outer third. It's up. And Joey Votto is good at baseball. Nice, easy swing. on here after getting two quick outs the walk home run followed up by another home run back to back for the second time in two innings for the Reds and the grand slam by Jeanette then the solo home run by Suarez in the seventh Ball on a strike here to Duvall. Shift on and it's going to work out. Swahe on the left side of the infield throws to first to end the inning. Three more runs for the Reds who have taken a 10 3 lead. Part of the game and Scooter Jeanette against Brad Hand hits a grand slam. Changed the complexion of this game with one swing of the bat and was part of a five run bottom of the seventh inning for Cincinnati. They have homered four times in the last two innings. It started with that grand slam. So it's on to the ninth inning. A seven run lead now for Cincinnati. And the closer are up, so they're going to bring him in. Yeah, we saw Iglesias in the first game of the series. Remember, it was 11 3. And the closer needed some work. Not a safe situation. As it was the first night. And pretty darn good numbers. Some serious fuzz out of the hand of Iglesias. Luis Torrens letting it off here for the Padres. Torrens has flat out to left, single to center, and grounded out to third base. One of seven Padres hits today. Padres had a 3 2 lead 
into the bottom of the seventh inning. Now down 10 to 3. As Durant leads it off in the ninth inning. With Dusty Coleman waiting on deck. Fouled off, and it's one and two. Iglesias has take a look at uh, Dusty Coleman on deck. He's from Isla de la Juventud, Cuba. I wonder where the emphasis goes there. J U V E N T U D. I'm sure Mike Tompkins down there, in the video room, could help me out on that one. Juventud? Cuba's a place I want to go someday. I'd love to go there. Two two. And it's on the outside corner for strike three. One down in the ninth inning. Luis Torres down by way of the K. That fastball at 98 has a little bit of late movement to catch that outside part of the dish, which is very, very tough to catch up to and make contact. There you see it. 6 2, 188. Juventud. You know, that's something I should have pursued. I took. Spanish in high school and I absolutely loved it. Yep. Got straight A's in it and wanted, you know, being in baseball. Should have pursued it. I would love at the snap of my fingers to speak fluent Spanish. You know quite a bit. I love the language. One down here in the ninth inning, Dusty Coleman. How about you, Pig Latin? No, I took French for a <laughs> while. Not well. Really? Yeah, real bad. Enough tutors did everything I could do to help out. I just you know, couldn't do it. Ninety-nine for you from Iglesias. That's coming in caliente right there. Two and two. Swahe waiting on deck. Padres batting in the ninth inning. Trailing by seven. To center field and a base hit. Dusty Coleman aboard for the second time since coming into the game. How about Iglesias also changing the arm angle, going a little Laredo on that one, and fighting it off was Dusty Coleman. He will sacrifice that shillelagh. He broke it for a big league knock. One out, one on, top of the order. Up and down just a little bit, low three quarters. Goes pitch down low, and it's now two and zero. Oh. Defensive indifference allows Coleman to take second base. Swahe singled the right field in the seventh inning. One for four in the ball game today. Ground ball down the first baseline. It's a fair ball, and Bono will tag the bag for round number two of the ninth inning. Taking third is Coleman. And the Padres down to their last out. Corey Spangenberg coming up. Spangenberg striking out in the first, grounded out in the third. Double 
the left center field in the fifth and grounded out in the seventh. Howells back to the screen for strike one. One from Iglesias in the air to left field. Duvall's got to play. He makes it, and the Reds win this one. Cincinnati takes three out of four from the Padres as the Padres drop this one 10 to three to Cincinnati from Cincinnati. Padres live is next. Mike Pomeranz looks at.